Welcome back to an intro to 123D Design. Uh, in this video, we're just going to talk about three last little basic leftover tools. I couldn't figure out what other category to put them in uh, that illustrate uh, some neat ways that sketches and solids can interact with each other. And those tools are called uh, Split Face, Split Solid, and the Text Tool. So here we go. Uh, now let's start by putting down a solid like this. And I'm going to raise it up in the air. And underneath it, put down just any old sketch. When I begin to extrude this sketch, you notice that, uh, as we saw before, when it crosses the solid, it will attempt to subtract it, like that. Or I can go over here and I can hit, you know, to merge with the solid that it crosses with instead, or I can have it intersect or create a new solid instead. But uh, another thing that I can do, uh, which works basically like a subtract and an intersect at once in that uh, it cuts the solid in half without actually losing any part of the solid um, is a tool called split solid and the way split solid works is um, you, you click split solid and then it wants a body to split and a splitting entity now this is um, a weird one of these tools where you have to select which piece you're actually picking. Uh, you know, in contrast to say something like uh, like this cylinder, let's say we have it crossing into here. If I'm going to do a subtract, watch what happens. I We have this, it's letting me know it wants the target solid. I click on the target solid and then it immediately transitions over to having me select the source solid. Okay. Now let's see how it works differently uh, when we use split solid. I'll, I'll get the cylinder out of the way and I'm going to hit split solid, and my body to split is the cube. I let it know that I'm selecting my splitting entity first before I click on the outline of this sketch. I can't just click the sketch, I have to click the outline. And you see a red negative volume just starts extending out up and down from that outline, uh, letting us know where it's going to cross that uh, square. When I hit enter, see how that cube was split up like that. So why is the transition not automatic? Well the answer is that you can split multiple solids at once. You are able to do this. It split solid and you select a body to split but actually you can select multiple bodies. Let's select both and I'm not even control clicking or shift clicking. Select the cube and the cylinder. I could keep clicking but it doesn't want to assume that the second thing I click is going to be the splitting entity because it may not be. The first two or three or five things I click can all go under the body to split category and that's why we have to manually say okay now I'm selecting the splitting entity and my splitting entity is going to be the sketch. You can see it cut a path through all of them. Now a uh, split face also works very similarly. Uh, the only difference is that it doesn't cut through the whole object. It just creates breaks in the face of an object. Uh, so it's, only, it's asking me, what faces do you want to split? And let's say I just want to split this top one. I'll select that. I'll select my splitting entity as this sketch and do that. The, the cube doesn't come apart, but I am now able to uh, come over here and you know tweak or press pull that individual face uh, which can be very useful if you want to create breaks in a curved surface which you are also able to do with uh, with split solid or split face let's try using this face as the face to split this as the splitting entity hit enter and you can see that I've now created a uh, what you would call it a break in the side of the cylinder okay so, that is split solid and split face. Now, um, a couple of different ways that you can use this. You can also split a face uh, using a, um, a, a whole body as well, another solid. Uh, so let's say that we want to create, um, you know, this here. An indent that goes in about as deep as that prism. We don't have to use a sketch. We can split solid using this way. Uh, Use the body to split, select the splitting entity. Oh, now watch something interesting here. When I'm selecting the splitting entity, 
it's being picky about whether I'm using this as the splitting entity, and in which case I get an invalid operation because it's not intersecting, or whether I'm using the whole shape as the splitting entity. Um, and to select it, in order to select the whole shape, and not just one of these sides, what I found works best is to take your mouse and start moving it towards a corner or towards an edge, and the closer you get to a corner, the more likely you are to highlight the entire shape as a splitting entity. Now I hit enter, and I can move this up, and you'll see that I now have a little peg in that, in that box that I can take right out. So that is a split body, split solid, um, with another solid, uh, but you can also do this with split face as well and just use, there we go, that whole solid, as long as it's intersecting, take it out, and now we have a break in the object. Uh, unlike, uh, unlike split solid, you can see that the break is only in the very top face of the object. Um, you know, these tools can be useful uh, for creating, um, you know, splits and curved surfaces when you want uh, text to, to fit right. Uh, so let's say that I have a, um, a cylinder and I'll give it a, a wider radius and a bigger height, and here's my outlines again. And uh, I want to use the text tool. Now, if we haven't covered the text tool, uh, let's cover it now. All you got to do is uh, click this right over here, click somewhere on the work grid that you want to write, and you're able to use any font installed on your computer um, to type in a little message. And you are then able to take this and extrude the text, or explode it into a sketch. Um, but if you extrude the text, what you're able to do is create solids out of those letters. Um, and uh, you know what? This might be a little... Actually, no, let's just turn this can sideways, like this. And I'm going to select all of my solids over here move them, rotate them. They can be a little bit complex, so things might start getting a little bit laggy when you're working with text. Let's look at it from the front. Uh, let's get into orthographic view. There we go. And once I cross them into here, I could just merge these, but I kind of don't really like the fact that on a curved surface, the letters are sticking out flat. So what I'm going to do instead is use split solid with this text, with the cylinder as the solid, and these as the splitting entities. Now remember, I have to select each solid, not the faces of them, which can be a little bit tricky, so that's why I'm going a little bit slow when I select these. There we go. Now I hit Enter. I move the letters away, and you can see that I am left with breaks on the face that I can now select on their own. I can, maybe I can push them in instead of have letters sticking out. Or I can have them stick out, but at least they'll stick out in a way that follows the curve of the cylinder. So you can see I can do that. And notice how it actually keeps that curve. Things can work like that, or I can just have them pop out entirely and give these letters a curve to the front of them, even if I never meant to use the cylinder in the first place. Um, so, some uh, some neat little tools there with uh, with split face and split solid. Now, at this point, you're pretty much ready to start trying out some of the sample exercises before we move on to the uh, to the advanced videos and uh, and uh, situational little techniques that that you might find useful as you keep using the software. Um, but right now, we pretty much know all the basics, so uh, we will uh, see you in the sample exercises and the videos after that.